Hey, it's Sharon here from Content Sparks, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily record uh, screen share tutorial videos, whether they're for customers or online courses, uh, team members, affiliates, anyone who needs some help where it's easier for you to show them than to just write or tell them what to do. And it's also great for visibility and marketing. So my preferred tool is Snagit, and I'm going to just open that up so you can see what the dashboard looks like here. I'm currently sharing a screen from a course of mine, so I want to show you some examples of using the screen share video there. But this is the Snagit dashboard. Um, and I've done a ton of different types of videos using this. I'll give you a few examples first before I go into how to actually step-by-step -step use Snagit for this. So here's an example, as I said, of a course curriculum, something that was guiding people that we, that we have to guide people through setting up their online course using brandable content. So some of these we recorded just using Zoom, but we also did some screen share ones. So as an example, um, when it came to recording videos, I did a video on how to record using Zoom. So I'll just open that up so you can see it in that lecture. And you can see there's the video. And I recorded this using Snagit so that I could then show people how the Zoom functions work where you're actually recording. So as an example here, I want to show you how to use Snagit. So I'm using Camtasia, which is a much more in-depth recorder and video editor too. So this I also put up on YouTube. And you can see it here on YouTube, how to use Zoom to create online course videos. So it was in the course, but I did it of this particular one for the public also since it was so useful right now and it's already had 92 over 92,000 views as I'm recording this and that was only uploaded a few months ago so you can see how doing these sorts of simple screen recordings can also get you a lot of visibility but I also use videos for things like showing my virtual assistant how to do things and I just upload them to screencast because from Snagit you can upload them there and I try to keep them organized in folders, but you can see I've done things on how to create a curriculum bundle, how to create a coupon, how to create a store credit, how to you know do a variety. If there's a problem in Hootsuite that they needed some help with, I quickly did a screen share to show how to fix that. So um, just here, let me open up one you can see as an example. So I just opened it up and I made it so that not just my current assistants, but future ones could also benefit. So there'd be training ready, readily available for any future people I hire. So I just made it generic and said, here's how you do a curriculum bundle. But I also do this for customers. So we'll put it into screencast or on a file and then upload it to our Zendesk help support desk so that if there are standard things that customers ask for, I can record a quick screen share, add it to the help center, and then it's there for anyone else. Or if anyone asks, we can send it to send them to that link. So as an example, um, how do I log into my account? Uh, that is one we could do something for, but here's one on how to check out if you're a previous customer. We did a little video for that. You could also do just screen captures, but a video is helpful. And then someone can go in and read the instructions, but also play Already the video. Already a customer and have an account and content. So those are easy to do as well and will save your support desk a lot of time. Um, I've also used them for affiliates. So we have affiliates who sometimes have trouble finding their training links or their, their affiliate links. So I created a training video to show them that. And we have a Facebook group for affiliates. And I just uploaded that to the videos area. So it's there for them how to create a link. And in their affiliate dashboard training videos section as well, training materials where I just did a simple screen capture using Snagit, how to create a link, where to find them, things like that. So that is a, a really useful way, just a few examples of how you can use screen capture, online course tutorials, of various different uses. Um, so let me now show you how it works with Snagit. And as an example, I'm going to pull up a document from one of our recent courses. 
Um, that is called managing remote teams. So a lot of times we recommend that you expand or supplement a course you're doing that may be text or video lectures, things like that. Expand it by doing some little tutorials where people need the extra help. In this case, it's on managing remote teams, so there may be places where you want to show them how to use a tool that they can use with their team. So the course goes through, let's see, challenges, rewards. I'm just looking through now to see where it might be useful to do, if you're teaching this, to um, create a screencast. So here, one of the modules talks about formalizing team communication and uh, your students who are learning how to manage remote teams, you're teaching them how to manage remote team and remote workers, one of the things they'll need to do is have a project management tool if they don't have one already. So you could, when you're teaching the course, give them a little screencast tutorial on how to use one of the tools. So one thing we use is Asana. So what you would do is record a screencast of using Asana. So I can show you our Asana. So I would go into to my Asana if I'm teaching my team members and walk through how to use the different things. Well, each one of our projects has certain phases and certain tasks that we repeat over and over, show them how to comment on things. Uh, if you like using Trello, you might go into your Trello and show them that. So that's the kind of thing that you would use to supplement your course. So again, I'm talking about an online course here that's about managing remote teams. You're teaching the course and you want to give your students some extra training. At the same time, you could be teach doing a video like this to teach them how to use Snagit so that they can do their own types of training for their team. So there's a you know, double, double use there. So let me open up Snagit now and show you how that works. I'm going to show you, let's see, what shall we show? How about with something like Zoom? All right, because that's one of the things I showed you my tutorial I did on how to record videos with Zoom. But if you have students, managers who have new remote workers, they're probably going to need to learn themselves how to use Zoom if they don't already and show their own team members. So you'd open up Snagit. That's the thing I showed you at the very beginning. This is the, you can download it for free, for a free trial from TechSmith. And I'll include a link to that under this video. Um, and then if you like it, you, you buy it. There's free ones also, I just happen to like Snagit. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure, here I'll minimize this so you can see it better, all this stuff. Okay, so this is another trick with doing screen capture in the first place is try and keep a very simple background. So here's what it looks like. You can do images, you can do scrolling, panoramic captures, we're going to do video. You can start with your webcam on if you want to create some connection with your audience. I'll show you that, so I'll leave it on. Otherwise, I often just have it off and do the screen capture. I want to make sure your microphone is on and you can check that. Record system audio would be clicks and stuff like that. You don't need to do that. Um, settings, you want to set the size of your screen or if you're doing a very fixed region. I have a widescreen monitor, so I have 1920 by 1050. But you could also select the region. Um, you can also do presets. I have presets already for the 1920 by 1050 as well as 1280 by 720 when I don't want to capture the whole screen. All right, um, don't worry about the other stuff. And then I'm just going to click capture. So I'm capturing the screen. You can move it around and have it wherever you want. So let's put it just at the top here. So that's ready to go. And now it's going to be, it's showing me because I had it as starting with the actual, you know, with the webcam. And let me see if I can show you. Um, I'm not going to be able to move it over necessarily for you to see. Ah, maybe you can. So I haven't tried this particular thing before, but I'm trying to show you the controls which will be out of the picture. 
usually. And if you're working with just one monitor, then you'll probably need to make your size of your video of your, you know, that, that size in the 1920 by 1080, make it smaller so you're only capturing part of the screen and you can see your controls. But if you can see this, you can see I pressed record and it shows that I have the webcam on, it shows the microphones going. Now, if I turn the webcam off, obviously you can no longer see me. And I haven't started recording yet. I, I would have to click that record button once we're ready to start. I'm just showing you how the functions work. So that's everything. Now, before I start recording, I wanna have those particular windows up and ready to go. So let me just cancel this for the moment and go back to our screen. So you don't need to see this right now. What I do wanna show you is that we want to have all those things open and ready to go. So we're going to show Zoom and how to do that. So I have that window open. I also have notes ready of everything I want to go through. So I walked through all this video first. Now these are just my notes for this particular video, but you want to do something like this for your own screencast videos for your preparation. So have your your different points that you want to go through, the different steps you want to go through. I have it in Evernote off on the side, but I also have it on an iPad down below, which I can show you too if you want. I'm just not on camera. So let's get started with finally doing the recording. So again, I set that up. I know I want the full screen. I'm going to click Capture, pick my area right here. So you can see, and now I have it all ready to go, starting on screen. Let me bring those controls back again so you can see them. And then when you're ready to go, you take a deep breath, smile if you're gonna be on camera, press record, it goes three, two, one. And another thing I'm gonna do before I start is hide this notification that says it's using the camera. And you can always edit things afterwards. So I could clip this beginning bit. Even if you don't have an editor and snag it, you can just clip like the beginning, the end little bits. But I would just start, hey, it's Sharon here from Content Sparks. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get set up on Zoom so that we can do meetings and conference calls and actually be able to see each other. So I'm gonna head over my screen now and show you. So now I'm gonna turn off that. And remember, you're not gonna have this visible when you're actually recording. So I will move this out of the way. And if you ever need to stop, you're not sure what you're doing, you say don't want to um, uh, spend a lot of time opening something, you can just pause it, get your stuff sorted out if you need to open something, and then press record again, and it'll come right back on. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. You would then walk through step by step. Okay, we're gonna use Zoom. This is our main tool for communication. First, you'll need to sign up. So you'll go through the sign up process and show them how to do it. Once they've signed up, you can show them how to sign in and do all that, show them how to fi find their meeting ID. This isn't a tutorial on using Zoom, so I'm not gonna continue on that. And when you're all done, close it out with saying, okay, you can contact me here for questions or whatever your call to action is, depending on the video, whether it's contact me or go to this page or go to this freebie I have, anything like that. So let's stop it and it will pop up in the editor. And you can see that's how I opened with the on camera. So that's what's showing first. And you could do a little bit of editing in here you can you know, clip some certain things, the beginning and the end. This is why I then use Camtasia because I prefer the editing power. But when you're sure you're done, you go into the upper right here where it says share and you're gonna click on share. And the easiest initially is to just save it to a file. Make sure you have it on your computer saved. But you can also send it directly to Screencast if you have a there's a free account you can have on Screencast, or you can get more storage with a paid one. I like using that for things like a quick customer tutorial, if some, for customer service, if someone has a question, 
or for an assist for my virtual assistant if they need some guidance on something so it's great for teams but if it's something bigger you could also send it directly to Camtasia if you have Camtasia for editing you can save it to Dropbox you can even upload it directly to YouTube because remember that you do need to have it somewhere where people can actually view it you don't want to save a file and send them the file it's much better if you put it on YouTube put it on screencast um, Vimeo places like that where you can where people will be able to view it easily and if it's something else where say uh, it's part of a course you can have it on an online course platform so like the one I showed you before where we have it here that's our course platform is teachable or like I showed you before in the Facebook group we also do a, a challenge it's kind of like a course in a Facebook group and we'll put videos in there or we have a, a customer membership area where we'll put videos and upload them there or other players so lots of different choices and of course there's YouTube as I mentioned which is great for marketing or you can make it unlisted if you have a course and you want to show people things I think that's pretty much everything at this point and um, just let me know if you do have any questions at all I put together a checklist as well which I will show you I'm gonna put this into a blog post so that you can see and download a quick um, a quick checklist with all these different things so preparing recording best practices and then our call to action with if you need some content to get a course up quickly so again let me know if you have any questions and I hope this was helpful take care